Hey, my name's Jason. I'm a registered sleep disorders technician, and uh, there's something that's been coming up quite a bit that I wanted to mention on uh, my video series, and it has to do with different CPAP, uh, I'm sorry, different positive airway pressure therapies for sleep disordered breathing. So these include CPAP, uh, BiPAP, and BiPAP auto SV or BiPAP auto servo ventilation. Um, this comes up because people, I'm getting a lot of patients and have for quite a while that think uh, BiPAP is better for them because, you know, I don't know why, because it's a fancier name or because uh, they feel that their sleep problems may be more complicated or for whatever reason. And I just wanted to uh, give you an understanding of what these are all about. Now, you can't really pick which one's going to work for you. It doesn't work like that. Um, um, Positive airway pressure therapy is much like any other medication. So hypertension, for example, if you have high blood pressure and uh, five milligrams of a certain drug is what works for you, well, if you go 10 milligrams of that same drug, uh, it's not gonna be effective. You're gonna be passing out all the time. Uh, if you don't take it at all, so zero milligrams, you're still gonna have hypertension. Uh, if five milligrams works for you and that's what uh, corrects your hypertension, that's what's gonna work. The same can be said for positive airway pressure therapy, whether you're on CPAP at 10 centimeters of water pressure, um, BiPAP at uh, you know 10 over five centimeters of water pressure, or if you're on an auto SV unit. Um, whatever works for you is what works and there's really not much in getting around that. So you telling your doctor that uh, this is too high or it's too low or whatever. I mean, yeah, it may feel like it's too high or it may feel like it's too low, but in reality, that's what's gonna work for you. And so that's what you need to become accustomed to and get used to. And so anyway, moving on. <laughs> what CPAP is, it stands for co uh, Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. So what that does, what that means is you have a continuous pressure and that the machine is constantly trying to adjust to the changes in your breathing. Um, you know, let me liken it to a car tire. Car tire, the air in it holds up the weight of the, the car. So because we're living, breathing things, um, it, it's not quite as easy as just pumping air in us and letting us, you know, letting that hold up our airway because we need to breathe. So what the CPAP unit does, and all of them do, is they try to maintain uh, whatever pressure is, is meant to be set at. So it needs to take into account your exhalation, uh, so which, which is why all masks have a leak on them a natural leak where your expired air can go and uh, uh, these machines will basically turn up they constantly calculate this turn up turn down accordingly trying to maintain that continuous positive airway pressure um, so if uh, all snoring is if you're just a run-of-the-mill patient uh, your your sleep disorder breathing is handled very easily at, at just a CPAP pressure then uh, you'll be just for a random example, this isn't like a typical number, so don't freak out. Um, you start at five, uh, you have obstructive apnea um, with five centimeters of water pressure. You know, those obstructive apneas become hypopneas because they, they help open it a little bit, but not quite enough. Eventually, you know, those go away and you still have snoring at eight centimeters of water pressure. The technician increases to 10 and you sleep great on your back and in REM. So CPAP at 10 is what works for you, perfect. If for some reason you're asleep, maybe you develop central apneas or you have COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or something like that where you require a little more help in blowing off the CO2, and maybe I should explain that. If you have a buildup of CO2, um, that's what, uh, basically you have chemoreceptors. Those detect the amount of carbon dioxide in your upper airway, uh, or I'm sorry, the amount of carbon dioxide that you have. Um, if that is not, uh, the proper level and it's not it's not cycling enough <laughs> this is coming out poorly um, you're gonna have central apneas um, so what you need to do BiPAP is meant to um, help regulate that and so an increase in pressure so BiPAP to by <laughs> positive airway pressures so BiPAP when I said 10 over 5 it means when you inhale your inspiratory pressure is 10 when you exhale your expiratory pressure is 5 um, what that lower number represents is when obstructive apneas are gone. So if you have no obstructive apneas at five, your bottom number is five, and the inspiratory pressure is increased up until you stop snoring. So you could be like five over 10. If your obstructive apneas stop with an EPAP of 10, they're gonna be something over 10. And then that constant uh, changing of air helps you blow off CO2 
and therefore keep breathing at a normal pace. Well, if that doesn't work and you continue having central sleep apnea, maybe you have Shane Stokes rep respiration, which that one I'm gonna draw a little picture of. I do have examples on my website of this. So what you get with that is, um, these are points, I don't know if you remember if you've even had a sleep study yet, but you have a nasal cannula, cannula in your nose, and that's what this top one represents. So you're not breathing here, and then it starts slowly breathing, breathing, gets bigger, bigger, and then smaller, smaller, until you're not breathing. These are the chest and abdom, abdominal belts, and uh, these basically tell you what the effort is. So if you have no effort, it means that your brain's not even signaling yourself to breathe. Um, someone with obstructive apnea, when this line is flat, you'd still see movement here because you're trying to breathe, but something up here is obstructing it. So with this, there's no obstruction, and they're not breathing, so you're not even trying to breathe. Well, in this case, if BiPAP doesn't fix that, then you're gonna, your doctor's probably going to go to an auto SV unit. Um, what those do is, during these periods of breathing, it shuts off or lowers to ne a neg negligible amount. Um, it will kick in when it senses that the breathing is shallowing, it will kick in and take up the slack and keep you breathing. So it'll off, turn on, 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 on the most, and then when you resume breathing over here, um, it'll again turn off. So it does this over, over the night. So that's just a brief intro into it. Um, I get a lot of questions about that and, you know, Sometimes insurance companies, well, often insurance companies don't want to pay for a BiPAP because they're really they're not needed, and there's a certain procedure that needs to be, be gone through. And uh, so, just a heads up, <laughs> just a heads up. If you have any questions, please email me. I'd love to hear from you, and uh, hopefully that clears up some things.